Please don't trip. Good morning, everyone. It's been a month already. We are back. Yes, we are. At Lead Financial with the one and only Delta Jones Walker. And Delta, I, I switched seats today because I'm going to be in the hot seat with you today on the financial focus. Yes, you are. And I just want you to, uh, we're going to jump right into this, this discussion about identity theft, but I'll ask that you give your disclaimer first. Okay. So securities and advisory services offered through Woodbury Financial Services, Inc., member of FINRA, as well as SIPC Insurance Services offered through Atlet Financial Group, 717B Main Street, Cherville, Indiana, 46375, which is not affiliated with Woodbury Financial. So um, Chelsea is our media person here at Atlet Financial. Mm -hmm. But Chelsea is also a client and Chelsea contacted me with some disturbing news a few weeks ago in regards to identity theft. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna talk with Chelsea and just ask her, you know, what were her thoughts um, after the incident occurred? What, what were the steps that she took after um, the incident occurred mm -hmm. and um, role play with us, Chelsea. Yes. What did you do? Yes, so um, I'm going to go and be fully transparent that this is the first time that I have shared this outside of my immediate family. Okay. And I'm going to apologize to any of my immediate family who may be watching right mm -hmm. now and they say, well, why didn't you tell me? I mean, some things are just kind of meant until you've handled it mm -hmm. to be just kept under wraps and mm -hmm. so I will start by saying that it has been handled and it's okay and it's okay, okay. but um, back on October 3rd I was a victim of theft physical theft okay where there was damage to my property mm -hmm. and I uh, my personal information was compromised due to the theft of my wallet okay and so so it, where was your wallet okay my wallet was inside of my vehicle tucked away in my personal items. And so my, my truck was vandalized. And so some of my items were stolen, including my wallet out of my truck. When I visited, when I was out of the truck for a little bit, visiting a business establishment. Okay, so did you have, did you leave your key somewhere and someone got a hold of your key? How did they get in to vandalize your truck? Okay, so I had my keys, I had my phone. Okay. And so my window was actually burst on my vehicle. Okay. And then they were able to come inside and ramble through my items and, and found my wallet. Okay. And so I uh, fully take uh, responsibility for that, but at the same time, when you think about it, it's your own personal property, they mm -hmm. shouldn't be bothering your property, mm -hmm. but you know how you jump out with your keys in your phone and mm -hmm. with the intent of coming back. And so when I arrived back at my vehicle, um, this this had taken place. Now, I was out of state, so I was not in Indiana at okay. the time, and um, I was in Illinois. Mm -hmm. And so that automatically just kind of put this whole fear and panic because I just wasn't in my home territory, you know. It wasn't you were not in, in your comfort zone. I was not in my comfort zone. However, the first thing I thought about as far as, oh, they have my wallet, it made me think about my identity, my credit cards, and access to my personal information. So what did you do? Um, you would be proud of me to know that I was, for the most part, pretty calm about the situation. Um, the place in the establishment where I was, there was actually a police officer on duty. Okay. And um, I immediately went and got him to the property to show where it was uh, had taken place. As soon as that took place, he was, uh, you know, reaching out to get a squad car to come out. But we soon found that in Illinois, if the perpetrator of the crime is not on the scene, there's not an immediate threat or danger, you have to go to the police station to oh, file really? a report. So a squad car did not come out. 
So busted window and all. You busted still. window and all. <laughs> okay, it's they not did funny, not come but, out, but yes. that's. I mean, you know, I want to use this as a learning lesson for those who, you know, may be watching or want to share it with yes. their children, their mm -hmm. family, and friends. The importance. The importance of what you do when you in one of these situations because you have to act fast and I did mm -hmm. act fast and so once I was notified that the police were not going to come out that I was going to have to go to a precinct and file a report I said okay well I can do that second let me go ahead and go over the things that are in my wallet okay. that needed to be protected so anybody who knows me I'm not a cash person so I wasn't worried about that. There wasn't a big bundle of cash. I think they got away with a whole big whopping ten dollars. Okay, I had okay, okay. A ten dollar um, bill. Okay. It was more so about my license and my credit cards. So the first tip I'd like to share with you and your viewers, and these are things that I learned by being a client at AtLib Financial. I have to say, is that you need to have those apps downloaded onto your yes, phone you mm -hmm. that are connected to your credit cards. You know, people are always apprehensive about online banking, mm -hmm. but this was a Saturday, you know, right. and you are not readily able to just walk into bank branches. And plus that would have taken more time to And go. we're in COVID. And we're so in COVID. The banks are closing um, earlier. Anyway. Anyway. So the first two things I did was I went to my various mobile apps that were connected to my credit cards okay. and deactivated the cards. Okay. I was able to do that right away. Okay. So if somebody had my wallet and they were running on their way to Walmart, it wasn't going to work. And this okay. was within five minutes of me realizing, being, realizing that my truck had been vandalized. Okay. okay. So that was one of the things that I would say is the number one thing. So you mentioned credit card, but you did not mention your debit card. So was that also one that you deactivated? Yes, I was able okay. to do that as well. And you may see on some of the commercials sometimes where people misplace their cards yes. and they're able to turn it off and turn it on. Mm -hmm. And so what I was able to do was turn it off. Okay. And then I called my bank. Okay. Right? Okay. So I called them. And I notified them of the theft of my, my debit card. Mm -hmm. So they were able to, you know, shut the whole account down and reissue me another card. I had to pay a $5 rush fee, but I had my new debit card by Tuesday. Okay. Okay. And the incident occurred on? Saturday. Okay. So I, I was willing to pay that. that $5 to be able to do that. You know, another important thing that people should be mindful of, and I had done this as well, is I had a copy of everything that was in my wallet. I have a, mm. a photocopy of everything that was in my wallet. So my license, mm -hmm. I knew what my license said, you know, my license number if asked, mm -hmm. um, my insurance cards. Okay. So I was able to reach out to my insurance um, person mm -hmm. and indicate that I needed a duplicate insurance card duplicate insurance cards I also needed to file a claim for what was taken in my car and the vandalism made done to my car the window okay. so again the importance of having that app I was able to file mm -hmm. my claim on, on my, my phone, phone. Okay? okay so I filed my claim mm -hmm. and then I drove over to the police precinct to make the report and I was able to give them, you know, file the report and able to upload photos. I used my phone to take photos of the damage to the window. Okay. And was able to upload those photos into the claim on my phone. My claim was settled by that following Friday. Less than a week, the direct deposit for the damages and everything was done. And so I'm saying all of these things to you and to your viewers to give these tips about uh, protecting yourself from identity theft and some things that you can have right at your fingertips. Now, I know somebody might be thinking, well, what happens if you uh, your phone is stolen? Well, they could be saying that. Yes, but I would say even to that, having computer access right, right. away and because all apps are connected. So uh -huh. your phone is connected to your iPad. Your iPad is connected to your mm -hmm. desktop. Mm -hmm. And as well as your little 
Chromebook, your handheld, whatever mm -hmm. you're using. Mm -hmm. So everything is connected. Absolutely. But the basic tip I would say is if you haven't done it already, make hard copies of everything that's in your wallet. Good point. That for me was the lifesaver. And I was, you know, able, to, even after I'd gotten home, I was able to go through that list to make sure I hit it and hit everything. So I had one um, retail card. Okay. Right? And so I was able to shut the call and shut that down. And I was able to also get my car fixed that same day, that Saturday. Now that's oh, wow. not anything dealing with credit, but I will give kudos to my husband for jumping on that piece while I was handling the financial pieces. Okay. He called around and was able, I was able to go in that same day and get my glass replaced. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is that we are in tune with all of our various accounts. Mm -hmm. So I was the type of individual that I check my accounts every day anyway. Okay. And I have Good those job. alerts on your card. Your cards where if there's a duplicate or suspicious activity, mm -hmm. you should have it set up where they text your phone. Because you could be busy right away and somebody's online having a field day with your credit card and you know nothing about it. So these types of pieces are in place with these apps and these credit card companies, but it's incumbent upon us to take the necessary steps to get those alerts set up. Chelsea, you have spoken about everything that was in your wallet. Mm -hmm. You have not mentioned your social security card. Okay. My, was it in your wallet? It was not. Good job. I do not carry my social, you do not carry, carry your, your social, social security, security card. card. So everybody You need to commit watching, that to memory. You should know your social security number. There's right. no reason for you to have a social security card in on your you. wallet. Yes. Okay. And the next question, because a lot of people can't remember all of their passwords. Mm -hmm. So they'll have like this little cheat sheet mm -hmm. and they will have it in between their wallet or in their oh. license behind, behind in their wallet behind the license mm -hmm. so did you have I something like that i Good did job. not okay. and um fortunately enough again i had my phone and my phone has those passwords that are stored you can't see them but it will automatically log me in yes. however i have a a lock on the screen of the phone, you know, okay. so if your phone is stolen, even if you have those passwords programmed into the apps, mm -hmm. if your screen is locked and they have to do a whole factory reset, they can't get to your personal information. So your takeaway would be to make sure that you have passwords on all of your devices. Passwords on all of your devices and then have those passwords to the various apps saved and secured somewhere else. My passwords are secured and written down at home okay. in case I am in an emergency where I can't speak for myself and I need my spouse to access certain accounts. We keep all of those documents in one location to say, okay, here's how you log into this, here's how you log into that. But I fortunately, I was not harmed in this incident. I want you all to know my little feelings were hurt a little bit because they did get a coat that was on the back seat that I really wanted to wear. I hadn't worn it yet. And um, so it was okay. a unique coat. But again, you know, I did all of the chronicling of what was in my vehicle and was mm -hmm. able to list it all on the claim. Now here, I have two more things, Delta, that okay. I learned through this process, particularly with the insurance. So you would think that your auto insurance would be directly co connected to the contents in the vehicle. Your auto insurance yes, does not. not cover the contents in the vehicle. It's your homeowners and property insurance that covers. that covers it. So I had to file two, two separate minutes. claims. So once I got the estimate for how much it costs for the window, I immediately dropped the claim for the auto insurance because it, it was, was below your deductible. It was below my deductible. You're okay. so smart. <laughs> right. So my focus became the homeowners insurance policy. Okay. So those out there who live in apartments, homes, whatever, if you are vandalized outside of your home, that policy is the one that covers your personal items. Yes. So I was So saying, it is important that you that have that rent, that you have renter's insurance. Uh -huh. This is another feature that will help you in a time of a situation like Chelsea is speaking uh -huh. of. And I mean, I didn't shed a tear. It was like, it was an inconvenience. 
And I even, well, my sister, when I told her about it, she said, you just have to pray for people who feel like it's okay to take things that don't belong to them. Belong she said, you them. could could left your truck running at the stop sign. That doesn't give me the right to jump in and drive it off because it's not my truck. It's you not know. my truck. It's yours running. Exactly. Mine running. Yeah. But of course, lessons learned. So that was it about the insurance piece. The very last piece that's very important I contacted all of the credit reporting agencies. Yes. So you know them, Experian and, and... It's Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Yes. Okay. I contacted all of them to put a, a one freeze. year... A freeze. A one year alert... She's good. She's good. <laughs> ...on my credit report. Okay. So that if anybody, for some reason, felt like they were so savvy, like, well, I have her license, mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to open some new accounts, mm -hmm. I will get an alert the minute someone tries to open an account in my name or anything like that. And the cool thing about it is when you contact one, they contact all three. They contact all three, but I always tell people to be safe than sorry. You contact them to just confirm mm -hmm. that it's on there. Mm -hmm. And um, believe it or not, that you have to remember to go back especially with it being on there for a year because just let's say you are saying you know what i'm gonna see what they'll give me as an increased credit line mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to give you anything because of the fact that you have a freeze on your account and mm -hmm. they can't even see it mm -hmm. so you have to be very mindful when you're doing that yes so that you will know oh mm -hmm. no i cannot apply for anything right. else until i take the freeze off my right. report which is good yeah it's, it's good, good. It's and i don't good. i don't have any plans right now per se i just want to just make sure that nobody else has any plans with my identity and i also received it in writing in the mail after after the fact from each of the credit reporting agencies that this update has been made to your credit account mm -hmm. and we will be checking into uh, to let you know if anybody tries to open an account in your name the other thing that was also in my wallet was my checkbook talk to me my checkbook um, I have written two checks I know checks are real kind of like Mm -hmm. Really just for business purposes. So it was my business account checkbook. Okay. And so I reached out to my bank on a Saturday mm -hmm. and was able to stop payment on all checks above the number of those last two checks I had written. So say, because I wanted those two to clear. And so say the check numbers were 100 and 102. 102. Mm -hmm. Everything above 102 if somebody had tried to go to write a check, use my license and everything, that check would automatically be rejected. And so I was able to order a new set, mm -hmm. higher numbers, and everything below that, null and void. Right. So I know that whomever's out there and you got my personal items, they were probably mad at me. I got one email where someone had tried on that Monday to pay their Verizon. Oh, because I was like Verizon. I was like, I don't have Verizon. And I was like, and it was de declined uh -huh. on a card that had been canceled. And so they waited too late. And so I am using this opportunity as a teaching moment and an opportunity to introduce audiences to AtLib Financial because all of the things that I listed are the types of things that I learned and practiced by having a financial advisor. So I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I want you to talk to Delta. Okay. And Delta, you talk to them briefly about those types of services that fold into that. You know, everybody always thinks that, well, when I go see a financial advisor, it's just all about my money and what I have to pay. And, but there are also angles that are in place and counseling in place where you protect us from our own selves when it comes to money matters and just credit and personal information. You know, the first thing is sitting with an advisor. Mm -hmm. You need to interview an advisor and feel the comfort level that the advisor is there to help you in this process, help you to build well, help you in the issues or concerns that you may have when it comes to budgeting. Mm -hmm. Discuss with you things like if there's an identity theft, 
How do you proceed? How do you handle yourself? Don't get scared about the situation. This is serious. Mm -hmm. We need to take action. And you can get scared later or you yeah. won't become scared later. What will happen yeah. is you'll become aggravated because you're just like, do you realize how much time I had to utilize mm -hmm. in order to get my business and my affairs in place because someone has taken something of yeah, mine. They've taken advantage of me. But again, look past that because of the fact that's information that has been shared with you and you know exactly what to do or if there's some things that you might feel that you have not taken care of, mm -hmm. but you know the beginning phases, and you reach out to your advisor and say something like, hey, um, Delta, I know it's a Saturday, but listen, this is what happened. This is what I've done. Is there anything else I, I need, need to, to do? do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, it is a process, but the, the first portion of the process is engagement. Mm -hmm. You need to sit with the, the financial advisor to and be assured that the relationship that you're developing is one to help you mm -hmm. in the process of your financial build out. Mm -hmm. Most and, important. And that's why I was just so grateful and I really feel like that's why I was able to react in a calm manner. Mm -hmm. Because I knew what was in my purse. But it has also taught me going forward, obviously, you know, even if you're gonna be gone for a short minute, you can't you, you have to be aware of what's on your seats. Mm -hmm. Trust in the what's the environment that you're in. Oh, and I had to go get another license. But the cool thing about that, I was able to go to the license bureau that same day okay. because if your license is on record, they can print you out a temporary one to carry around until they mail you the 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 new copy of it. I didn't have to take license. a new picture or anything like that. Oh, wow. I just got a okay. duplicate of my license, and I had that within a week as well. So okay. everything is back. And um, back in order. Back in stride. I'm back in stride, but I wanted to use this as a, a teaching lesson. And I wanted to thank you publicly for the guidance that you continue to give me in my financial affairs. And that we should not forget these things that we take for granted when we talk about our identity. It's yes. all we have. This is all we have. I, you know, they can, can you imagine somebody out there being Chelsea? Um, just, I, I just kept thinking about them getting into my 401k uh -huh. or my IRA. Or oh, I would be sick. Yes. You know. <laughs> and so, and so, as a as a financial advisor, they are talking to us about that information. Someone has stole your identity, mm -hmm. and they call into the office and they say, oh. This is Chelsea, and I would like to transact. Can you send money over to this account? Mm. But don't send it to my account that you have on file. Send it send to this to, new one. It's like, okay, <laughs> well, hold on, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Let me call you back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, oh no, you don't don't call me back on that number. Call me back on, on this, this number. number. Okay, fine. so get give me the number. So I'm getting the number, but at the same time, I'm calling Chelsea back on the number that we know yes. in the office because of the relationship that we have with all of our clients at Atlet, yes. when people are changing addresses, telephone numbers, the email time. addresses, they're contacting us so we know. Mm -hmm. So that is not gonna get past us very quickly. That's so comforting to know. And so if you are watching this or you have a loved one, a spouse, a friend who uh, needs this type of information, I would just say, start the process of getting a financial advisor, I just knew that I could get to all of my items, my documents, my accounts, and I have someone on my team whom I trust that will keep my confidence, that will keep my financial journey moving the way it should go. And um, I'm going to keep my seats clear now. Okay. You know, my husband's like, you learned, huh? You learned today. You yeah. had the coat on there, you know. So it was an attractor because my purse or anything wasn't readily visible. But I think the coat, the coat was was, was uh, like, oh, what do we have here? And then yeah. it's oh, well, let me look and see what else. And then they were able to reach under the seat. So you didn't mind. have any computers or anything. I did. My laptop was in there as well. So I was headed to another location after all of this was said and done. So I was really packed to go work. And so that morning stop turned into everything else had to stop for that day for me to handle it. But in the words of my TV idol Olivia Pope, is handled. <laughs> and I want to so, thank you. <laughs> let me ask you about that computer. Mm -hmm. Did you have the computer backed up? The, the computer was backed up. Okay. I have since, um, thanks to the claim, 
I have since purchased another laptop. All I had to do was log in and bling, everything came up from my cloud. Okay. And um, there was a pass protector on the one that was stolen. So anybody who's using it, they wouldn't have been able to log in as me. They would have to do a full factory reset and just would start all over. But all my documents were backed up onto my main computer at home. So that's another tip okay. for those of you who just carry your whole life on your laptop. Don't do it. Upload it, back it up somewhere else. So that to me and my laptop, fortunately, was my secondary computer. My main main, you know, is a mainframe, you know, uh, okay. desktop computer. So I kind of use that on the fly. Mm -hmm. And all of my major important documents were not with me okay. on, that doc on that terminal. So I was very fortunate and blessed. But it's a lesson learned because I will share with you, like I told you yesterday, I'm still having nightmares about it. I, yes. I have dreams, not even about the window getting burst. I have dreams about somebody stealing my identity. Yes. And so um, get those protectors in place that we talked about today. And how do they get in touch with you, Delta? So um, listening audience, I am so thankful that Chelsea shared this information with us today. And um, for those that are listening and you're like, okay, how do I get in contact with Delta? I want you to call. You can reach out and call our 800 number, 631-4866, or you can email us at uh, www.atlevfinancial.com. That's the website. Okay. Okay. I mean, yes. yes. Visit your website. Okay, you okay. can visit the website. When you visit the website, you can um, schedule, you could just state that you will want for someone in the office to reach out to you to schedule an appointment. You could also go to Twitter, LinkedIn, as well as Facebook. Follow us because we're always putting information out there mm -hmm. to, you know, share with our clients, share with our prospective clients, just share with individuals that feel like they have some concerns and they need to know in regards to financial wellness. Yes. Um, and last but not least, you know, you can always visit us. We're right here in Sherville, Indiana at 717B Main Street. And um, just pop in and say, hey, I heard you on Facebook Live and I would like to schedule an appointment. We welcome you. Just come on in. Thank you, Delta. I you can't say it enough. Do it today. This has been Delta Jones Walker of Atlet Financial. I'm Chelsea Whittington of CWIT PR. It's just so funny. I know I'm not my usual bubbly, rosy self because every time I talk about this, I relive the incident. But I want somebody to be changed by this to do the right thing to protect your identity. Thanks again, Delta. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. All right, then. Take care.